So welcome everybody to this video. We have a very special guest today that I am excited to introduce you to. I'm Chiyoko with Abundant Living and this is Alicia of many different projects and modalities. Um, Living Ground, I'll just mention one right now and then we'll talk about a lot of the different things that you have going on here in the neighboring valley to Vilcabamba. So um, Leisha and us today are located in Masanamaka, which is a town that's next door to Vilcabamba. Again, one valley way away. And there's a lot of different interesting topics that we'll cover on today. Um, this is one of our videos that is part of the professional spotlight of the Abundant Living YouTube channel and professional spotlight specifically around health and wellness practitioners that we have here. So as we've mentioned before in these videos, there's a lot of different practitioners in the valley of Vilcabamba and surrounding areas. And uh, the spotlight today on Leisha is, is quite exciting. So before we dive in, I will mention the usual. If you like this content, you want to be alerted to when we're going to have more videos coming out with more spotlight um, health and wellness practitioners, make sure you're subscribed to the Abundant Living channel. Um, you hit the like button, also the bell. If you hit the bell, then you'll get a notification when we have more amazing content like this. So, Lisha, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. And maybe you just want to do a moment and describe before we get into your story and background, where exactly are we sitting right now? <laughs> We are sitting in my apothecary, which is um, it's basically a dream I've had since I've been a little girl, which is taking the plants from the gardens and alchemizing them, fertilizing them, uh, enhancing them. Um, and these are all the results. Um, yeah, pretty amazing. And we'll speak a little bit more about, uh, I think, your process and where it's sourced. Um, sneak peek, a lot of it is right here on the grounds that we're on right now. And you can speak even more to the... I think, um, I, I know there's more than just a simple process. There's many steps to it, and you've been iterating on the apothecary for a while. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Mm -hmm. So I would love to just kick off and, and hand this over to you, Leisha, um, for a bit. I'd love to hear, in your words, you know, your story about what it is that you're doing here in Masanamaka, this town, um, on these grounds, and really what motivates you? You know, what, what keeps you inspired to keep on this mission that you're on? Mm. Probably because I know how, can I swear? <laughs> yeah, we can. Actually, no, no, no. I asked Jesse and he said no because YouTube censors. Okay. <laughs> because, because there's so many problems. Yeah. Um, we all know what she was going to say. Like, let's be honest. We all know what you're going to say. <laughs> um, you know, we've, we've all been programmed and the food system sucks and the healthcare system sucks and it's become pharmaceutical they've, they've become like gods I know. and mm -hmm. we as human beings humankind we've disconnected ourselves from who we are from nature yeah um and we're relying on these symptoms or s systems um and i actually think that has probably created more dis-ease than anything um it's taken back our power um, I mean, growing our own foods, growing our own medicines, learning how to alchemize, mm -hmm. empowering people to take their own lives into their own hands, um, most inspiring for me. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. How long have you been on this particular mission? I know we've all had many missions in our lives mm -hmm. over the years, but how long has this been your passion? Three decades, maybe even more. It's like a while. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so a while. <laughs> And has, how has that evolved, I guess, into what, what are you most focused on like right now? What is most present for you and the work that you do? Um, I'll just tease and say, you know, on this, on this land, um, soil is super important, understanding the health of soil, um, blood work for humans and analysis, super important. Um, where are you today with some of the things that you're most focused on with your work? Well, both. I mean, both in my practice um, and helping people with the live and dry blood. Um, and understanding the inner world of the human being, mm. understanding how the microbes are so important yeah. um, and that we've been at war with them. And the same thing with the soil. It's no different. It's foundational. Yeah. Um, I mean, when we look at the soil with a microscope and we see the microbiology, it's very similar to looking at blood. And the understanding is the mm -hmm. same. And it is about increasing the good guys. Um, okay. And... You know, this has been a change for me since I've got into the soil work. So prior to this, I was just an alternative healer with the same approach as a doctor, but just okay. using natural products. Now it's, I've had my own, I mean, I'm learning too, and I'm discovering, and thank you to all my clients that have, <laughs> are, are my 
teachers, uh, because everybody's different, but we've been at war with nature and our mm. bodies. And yeah. where I'm at now is like, we, we need to shift this in, in a paradigm shift and approach things differently. Um, and I honestly believe if we don't, we don't deserve to be here and we won't be. As a species. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love your bold statements. Mm -hmm. I've had the privilege of seeing Leisha speak at a few different of your events and a fundraising um, gala that was hosted in Vilcabamba. And you you speak with a passion of like, I know this is your soul's work that's, that's coming out and speaking. So yes, it's you, but I think there's a greater force and a mission that's mm -hmm. underlying, um, which is a current that I think a lot of people who watch these videos and they're connecting to the lifestyle of Vilcabamba health and wellness oriented, I think this deeply resonates, you know, these words. Mm -hmm. And I want to, um, there's so many things to dive into, but maybe tell me a bit more about the soil. You mentioned the good guys. And I know, I know what that means because I've, I've heard you speak. I've talked to your team members, but how do you describe the good guys? Who's the bad guys? Like, what, what is that all about from your perspective? Mm, well, there's a couple of ways of distinguishing them. The most important is all good guys are oxygen loving. Okay. All bad guys are anaerobic. And these are within the soil, right? And in the body. Okay. And okay. in the biome. I mean, the biomes mm -hmm. are everywhere. So yeah. um, on every surface yeah. that is in everything, there's biomes, there's okay. communities. And just because we can't see them doesn't mm -hmm. mean they're not there. Yep. You and I are sharing biomes right now. Um, and we've learned to be afraid of them, right? Like they're, they're dangerous. It's bad. This is like bacteria, right? Or uh, parasites, things like that. Are you talking about? Or tell me, tell me a bit more. Well, but parasites are simply they're, they're probably less than one percent of all the mm. microbes out there are yeah. pathogenic. Okay, are dangerous to us. But even the dangerous ones, we learn how to live with them symbiotically. If our foundation, our garden, our soil, or yeah. the human body is balanced. Yeah. Okay. You know. Yeah. Uh, another thing with the bad guys is they do create different environments. Mm. Um, so in the soil or in the human being, they actually, we are now learning the microbes in us are controlling our brain. Right. Right. They, about this. And yeah. up until recently, we didn't realize there was bacteria and microbes inside of our brain. And they've recently found out there is. And guess what they're like? The ones that are in our gut. They got, they talk to each other. Yes. You know, so if you got a lot of bad guys down here, they're going to mm -hmm. be telling you, I need sugar, sugar, yep. sugar, sugar, carbs, 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 or whatever. Yep. You know, there's a saying I heard years ago, I shared with you um, over 10 years ago, I was uh, enrolled in a holistic nutrition school. And so I think where I first heard this phrase of the gut is the second brain. Totally. Is this in that I'm yeah. like, okay, now I know it even deeper because I knew that from maybe a, a holistic nutrition basic level, but now I'm, I'm more deeply understanding that. And so is science. I mean, we're just learning mm. about this too, right? Okay. Okay. And for the soil, so tell me more about with the soil, the importance of it, and what is it that you're doing here um, on, this, on, on this project property and, and neighboring um, project properties mm -hmm. that you have? Well, I mean, I'm, I am almost a graduate of Dr. Elaine Ingham's Soul Food Web program, consultancy mm -hmm. program. Yep. And when I got involved with learning, I mean, she teaches us about the microscope and the microbiology and why this is important. The thing that struck me the most about the soil, first off, there's a soil sponge that's lost. Okay. And I believe if we put the soil sp sponge back in place mm. the way that nature has done it, this will actually um, balance out the climate. Okay. This is what okay. we're missing. And it's the microbes that create, we call them aggregates, but it's like, they're like mini castles that mm. hold the water yep. in that soil. And this is missing all over the earth, Interesting. everywhere. Uh, microbiology is the reason why plants uptake, uptake new nutrition. There's no reason to fertilize. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Without the microbiology, the plant does not uptake soluble yep. vitamins and minerals. So most of our food system is air and water. You know, it's just it, there. There's no nutrition mm -hmm. in our foods, even organic foods. Right. So bringing this back um, for human health is super important. Um, the soil is foundational to everything. I mean, it, it's yeah. I, I call it the soil so soul solution, right? The solution. I like that. I like that. Um, and it's true. And I was saying, I don't think I invented this, but it's something that came to mind, a phrase is, 
farm to table, it's soil to table. Yeah. It starts, and I know the farm, the soil is part of the farm, but it's that important almost to highlight what happens in the soil to the food that we're eating is instrumental, that soil, to the actual nutritional value yeah. and absorption that we have. And all of this um, information, and again, other you know events I've gone to, I can just tell there's a depth of knowledge that you have, and you're giving us a, like a surface little tease right now. Um, and something that I want to make sure to mention to people watching this, and we've talked about this, is how people can get more either information or experience um, some of the wisdom that you have to share and knowledge base is we are hosting a health and wellness retreat in October mm -hmm. in Vilcabamba, and we have you as one of the people, as a practitioner, um, someone who has you know, a craft that you've mastered in your project sites and also do one-on-one -on work, uh, one -on -one work with other clients. I'm going to talk about that in a bit. Mm -hmm. But um, Lisha will be one of the people, practitioners down here in Vilcabamba, who will be part of our health and wellness retreat. And that's exciting to me because I know you host workshops on these topics mm -hmm. that last more than one day, you know, two days or even more than that. And I'm sure even at the end of the couple of days, you feel like, and there's so much more, mm -hmm. you know, that you could be doing. Um, so I'd love if you shared, you know, this is some top line uh, knowledge, but in some of the workshops, you know, what people might be able to experience who come to your workshops like what are some of the things that you help people with because a lot of folks watching this they might be in the states or in canada and they might think okay well this is great information to know wow didn't realize that what do i do at home like how, how can how can i help myself and my maybe one small garden but mighty there's real change that could be made. Yeah, the, but people, I mean, it's a paradigm shift, right? I, we, I talked about that we have to stop being at war, which basically means we have to stop right. being afraid. Okay, tell yeah. me more about that. <laughs> um, okay, well, I'm going, if we look at the microbes and how they work in the soil. Yeah. When the good guys are present, so when the good yeah. bacteriums, the, the, the bacteria, the fungi, the amoebas, the flagellates, the nematodes, when they're present, they yeah. actually create a protective layer Right. Okay. Uh -huh. Or the plants. Uh -huh. So the pathogens can't come in. Got it. Okay. Same thing with the human body. So how can people take this knowledge? It's like learning how to alchemize your own food. Right. Learning how to make your own elixirs or ferments or tonics, but right from the garden. You know, yep. how learning how to plant those those herbs or foods that are medicine. I mean, all food is medicine. Right. You know? Um and having having this realization, this this uh, it sounds very small, you know. Don't be afraid, and we're, we're no more war. But it's it's actually huge. But you have to take a yeah. first step, yeah. right? I think conditioning. I would imagine you're working through a lot of people's mental conditioning of what to be afraid of. Mm -hmm. And we do get really scared. antibacterial soap, antibacterial everything. It's like, well, wait a minute. You might get rid of some bad guys, but the good guys vanish. As and well. then you're more vulnerable to the bad guys. Exactly. And and variants of the bad guys. Yes. And this is your area of expertise yeah. here, but I just know, um, is it, at first, you know, it, it can feel very uncomfortable for some people. Well, won't I get sick? You know, won't, won't, won't something bad happen? Yeah, there's a, because the fear factors in yep. there, right? But I think, I think most people actually do connect to this because they intuitively know it because they're mostly microbes. So, like, you know, like, I mean, they're 90% microbes. So I, I'm speaking yeah. to the microbe, right? The human being is just an appendage of the microbes. Right, right. So, <laughs> so interesting. I remember hearing you say that it's, um, is it 90%? Like we're 10% human. What is it? 10% human, 90% microbes? It, it's, it's probably more like 95%. But wow. I'll use that 90 for a buffer. There. It's almost a little creepy to think about it, but I know they're good for me. I think of all these little isms. All these isms. Um, share. Speaking of the isms, share a bit about um, what you see under the microscope. You know, that's something to kind of with the soil, and then maybe we can talk about the blood work that you do with people. Because I know microscopic work is super critical to what you do. Your area of expertise. Um, yeah, and, and I think in this video we'll be able to showcase in a bit um, some of Leisha's the other side of her lab. Here we're seeing the wonderful apothecary, but there's also a living lab that's going on with microscopes. I'm looking at them at this direction off the camera. Um, so just assume people can see some of what's going on here because it's pretty fascinating mm -hmm. what you're doing. So in the soil, uh, we're, we're making sure the good guys are home. That's what we're looking for. So okay. we're actually doing, it's very scientific. It's taught by Dr. Lane. And we're doing a very specific field of view readings, looking at counts. 
Okay. So, so we're looking at big bacteria and fungi and umicytes and different types of microbes. Yep. And we have a count. Is the soil good? Mm -hmm. Is it not? And if not, how can we improve it? Like, right. what do we need to do? And where do we need to focus? With the live blood, I mean, taking the inner world of the human being and putting it on a slide on the microscope, what can I see? It's like endless. Um, yeah. A lot of nutritional deficiencies are shown in the red blood cells. The plasma shows us waste, uh, waste debris. Yeah. Uh, what type of waste debris is that? Um, we can see a lot of uh, what we call rouleau, which is the sticking mm -hmm. of the red blood cells. Okay. Um, th that I call electrical potential. I mean, it's absolutely amazing because our we're not plugged into anything. I know, and right? we're working. It's like, where does this energy come from? Yeah, where where does this? So, I, looking Food. at the blood really gives you that, like, wow, this is. Me. These are the things that you're fueling your body mm -hmm. with. Like, what, or basically, the blood is a result of what you have fueled your body with. Yeah, yeah, and you can see evidence of what that person's been fueling with. Exactly, I can see or a lot lack of, of fueling. I can see a lot of microbes. I can see um, things like morgellons. I don't even know what that is. Joni Mitchell has just become a spokesperson. Okay. So it's Marcia. the allopathic community has now said, oh, it's a real thing. Um, but they okay. didn't for a long time. Mm -hmm. We can see microplasma. Uh, we can see, as I said, the crystals. We can see candida, if candida is Sure. Present. That's a big challenge for many people. Circulation issues, um, spider webs, which is the fibrin, which is our blood clotting, which is good. We can see inflammations. Right. Yeah. You know, and inflammation is good because it's there to protect us when we're under attack or under infection. Right. Um, but if it doesn't switch off, it, it can become very harmful. We see all the white blood cells. So yep. we get clues as, as there are allergies, sensitivities, infections, are the cleanup crew there? Yeah. You know? um, and then there's this sort of esoteric. I mean, the way that the blood mm. moves on the slide. Okay. That's, that's not clinical. That is just like, oh... You're a person with gumption or interesting, you know, you don't have a lot of spunk right now. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can, you can see that, track that, right? It's a bit, I don't know if it's intuitive necessarily, or you can see some sort of pat patterns. Well, every single cell that we see on the screen that we're looking at has a will. A okay. purpose needs food and poops. I love it. I love it. I mean, so what is what the is full the, spectrum? What is the definition of that? That's consciousness. Yeah. So to me, every single cell mm -hmm. yeah. has its own little consciousness wrapped up. Oh, I it. just got goosebumps with that. It's it's at this um, very profound divine level of what you're able to get a glimpse into, almost like this portal of seeing into something that's. Um, I will say the word godly or universe or powers that be that are greater than man, what mm -hmm. you're able to see. You know, we did not create, man did not create these these bodies that reproduce. And, you know, what you're able to glimpse into um, is pretty profound, really, really profound. And so you spoke about, this is great, The under the microscope, there's a soil analysis and then human blood analysis. Um, I'd love for you to tell me just a little bit more about you know, how you go about the process working with people, because this is the individual one-on-one -on -one sessions that you have as a practitioner. Mm -hmm. um, what, what does that process look like? And what can a, per what can a person expect when they um, come to see you during and after? Oh, yeah. Okay. So the testing actually only takes about half an hour, mass or mm -hmm. minus, a little, um, we do just take a, I take a little tiny prick of blood okay. uh, off the ear. And the reason I do the ear is because people don't like to see needles coming at them. And I find interesting. Blood, I didn't know that blood, was why you did you know, that. Okay. The blood, yeah. the blood does react to the human emotion. So I take it from the ear. It's very relaxed. It doesn't hurt. Okay. Uh, we put the blood on the side and we, we look at mm -hmm. the blood together as it's moving. And I'll talk about mm -hmm. a few things. And this all happens in the, the first sitting, yes. like this is all live happening. Yeah. Okay, got yeah. it. And I'll talk about a few things and I'll be taking photos and videos. And I I don't believe that I can read people's blood in 20 minutes. Everybody's so unique and different. Right. So I then analyze all the different markers. And you, I also can't take one marker and go, oh, you've got a kidney issue going on. You know, I, I'm, we can see uric acid in the blood, but it doesn't mean it's a, it could be that they had a heavy meat dinner the night before or okay. something, you know, so yep. I need to look at all factors yep. and then I create a report, Okay. which usually comes one to two days after in a PDF with all the photographs. And then I write a personalized mm -hmm. article. Um, and the photographs, what, what are the photographs of? How do you describe that? 
it, it, it's a blowing up of the markers. So, okay. so everything is identified. This marker means this, and I grade it. You know, so people can actually see yeah. from the photographs what it is specifically yeah. interesting. Okay. And I just had this thought. I know you do some follow up work with people who come back. Some of them travel back to the Filcabamba area to work with you again. Are you able to kind of see like the side by side photographs? Yeah, that's the best. That's I, I was thinking that I didn't know that. Um, that sounds really exciting to do. And um, how do people? So in in the report, if you can just tell a little bit more about the report, and you know, um, you're, you're left with information. I'm assuming. You know, if I come to you, what do you do next? Like, how do you change? your life do you have some advice for people in that area that's what the article is like it's yeah it, it's it's what the markers are sharing with us and then i kind of give a way for uh, a way forward i mean i'm a herbalist first and foremost mm -hmm. um, and i think food is medicine yeah so it's how can we alchemize our kitchens and our gardens um a lot of people don't like gardening so okay. i make a lot of compounds for people um and put them together but really, it's the I, the person is. I'm providing a framework or a map, but the person does have to do the work, and I applaud the ones that do. Yes. Um, and everything can change and needs adjusting. A lot of us don't know what it's like to be healthy. Our normals are not. Wow. You hmm. know, um, for example, there are a lot of markers that will tell me if a gallbladder needs to be cleaned. Wow. And I've, okay. had, I've had people like, I'm fine. I have no digestive issues. And I'll just I'll try it on. I'll okay. just do it. And they and they do a cleanse and they're like, oh, my gosh, I was actually not well. <laughs> but it was their normal, right? Yeah. I love working with people like that. But it's we're we're partners in health. It's I'm not, you know, for dosing, for example, with herbs, it's very, very difficult. Like even with pharmaceuticals, it's very, mm -hmm. very difficult. So I can have a baseline, but I'd like to work right. with people and try it on. Go high, go low, right? Go frequent, go you know. Mm -hmm. um, get to know these herbs. Yeah, I like to encourage people to make their own elixirs or grow their own plants. It's not always possible, but it's absolutely well. It's nice that you offer a, kind of a well-rounded array of support for people, depending where they're at. Um, cause everyone's in different places. Some people might be seasoned gardeners and some people are like, I just can't do it. <laughs> you know, I cannot even container gardening fails. And this is where, you know, maybe some of the, um, elixirs or tinctures that you make. And you spoke a bit about that. And, um, again, I'm off camera. I'm looking at this side of the lavatory over here, but maybe, maybe you could highlight or describe some of the things that you've made for people as a protocol. Cause it sounds like once they've done the live blood work analysis with you in a session, there are, as appropriate, some protocols that you set up for people to follow. Okay, well, so a lot of them are, are compounded herbs. Okay. So I will pick, based upon the markers that are shown, as long as they're not contraindicating each other, I mm -hmm. will pick a list of herbs. Okay. And then I, I describe those herbs in the report, why, why, I'm, why I'm choosing this one. Now, those, to me, are sort of like the hero herbs for this person. Yeah. So they can play with them one-on-one. -on -one. They can put them together. Okay. But I can com compound them into a very strong tincture. The other thing I'd like to do is, you know, there's a lot of foods like bone broths are very, very important. Yeah. Especially for the elderly. Right. Um, so then why don't we take that bone broth and after we've made it, infuse mm -hmm. it with the herbs that are good for the bones, you know, like the roux and the conch. Ah, like so and if you, yeah. Okay. So, so, so we're taking something that's a food and extending it right. even more. Right. Here for some of the elders in town here, mm -hmm. I, I will make big batches and I'll call them all. I'm making one. And Amazing. Put some, put some jars in, you know, um, but I give recipes so people can, okay. can do it themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's a lot about mineral and electrolyte regulation about upping certain types of foods. Sometimes it's just colors, you know, increase the purple and red foods, please. You know, <laughs> And I know what that means. I think everyone watching the video will, but it's for the vegetables, right? So maybe there's, you just need more of that tomatoes and the carrots. It's uh, the rule of thumb I've studied. It's like, you should have a rainbow. I think that's actually yeah. your thing. Yes. Can you please talk about your, some of your meals? I, I don't mean to jump everywhere, but like how many ingredients sometimes you put in certain meals to have that? Well, my salad, my salad uh -huh. has at least 20. Um, I mean, I like on my plate, I like to see at least 30 and I don't count them. I just at the end, I'm like, holy cow. But I also have the gardens, Yeah, you know, like my nephew recently was 
visiting from Canada and I sent him out to get some thyme, rosemary and parsley and he come back with these little tiny sprigs and I'm like, are you crazy? Go back <laughs> out there. He's like, well, how much more? I'm like 10, 20 times more, you right. know, because we live here in abundance. Yep. You know, and as long as the soil is good, these plants grow all year. Absolutely. Up, you know. You know, there's two things you hit on, which is really Vilcabamba lifestyle or Masana Maka or in the neighboring um, town to Vilcabamba and folks who've been watching this channel, they're, they're starting to know a lot about Vilcabamba and over the years these videos have put out. But one, I just have to acknowledge and just say that feels so good to my heart, how you help people in community. And you mentioned specifically elderly people who need this infused bone broth that might not be making it on their own, even if they have the recipe, but you make batches because you care and you know people and you've been here for so many years. Um, and also the abundance that this particular corner of planet Earth can offer. Um, it's to me as being here, not even a year yet, nine months, it's astounding and how fast things grow, mm -hmm. right? So you can catch just bushels full of things, you know, out in the garden or at the farmer's market for a fraction of the cost from the United States or from Canada, because the growing season is relatively year round. It changes a bit what can be grown at certain times of the year, but there's always production happening here. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure eating seasonally is something that's a big part of your, um, your magic mm -hmm. <laughs> in what you create and do here too. Well, the, the thing about it, I, mean, I am a Canadian gardener. I, I lived in Canada. And so we learned, you know, from, April, you put the seeds in the trays and we had a very short period to grow to harvest, yeah. but we learned how to harvest. You know, we learned how to preserve. We learned right. how to dehydrate and can. Yeah. And generally here in, in people have not learned that art because the food's always present, but it's still important yeah. because certain foods have certain high nutritional contents. Sure. So we do need to alchemize these. Sure. Put them with other foods and try to preserve them and contain them. Yep. Amazing. And this is all part of um, your story here. And how many years have you been here in Vilcabamba? Almost 12. Almost 12. Almost 12. Yeah. That's on the higher end of, um, I have a lot of friends here and that's definitely on the higher end. So you've seen a lot of things evolve here. You've mm -hmm. seen Vilcabamba grow, you know, and I'm, I would imagine the people who are coming to you and even Actually, you tell me, has your offering shifted a lot over the years when you first kind of started doing this this work um, to what you're doing today? Uh, oh, yeah. But <laughs> um, I mean, that's that's going down a personal journey because life, you know, life, life offered me a lot of opportunity to go through some serious sufferings. You know, and, Oh, the privilege yeah, to yes. experience that. And yeah. Mm -hmm. So of course everything morphs and changes with that. Yeah. yeah. And well, one of the things I was, I was thinking about is um, living ground in particular, that initiative, right. A, a, to call it a project, I think is a great understatement, but that project mm -hmm. and initiative um, has really caught the attention of many people locally in Vilcabamba. And I know some people outside of this area, um, maybe if, if you would like to speak to a bit about, you know, the present mission of living ground and one, what are you doing right now? And two, what's the mission? Like, what, where are you really taking this? Like, what's the vision? The vision is it's mainly education because yeah. I believe, I mean, the more that I've learned about the soil and applied it to work and health, mm -hmm. um, the more I realize people are disconnected from who they actually really are. Mm. So a lot of it is about uh, education, but giving people the experience of eating foods that are from soils grown in microbes, uh, having the experience like apprenticeships, internships, yes. schools, micro yep. tourism, health tourism. It's about helping people come in, come into our little family yeah. and then the project and feel inspired enough to take it back to their own world yes to change their i mean we, we can only bloom or plant it right right and so bloom where they're planted with this new information and whether that's the science of building this compost or the understanding of health and how it's all yep. connected um everything about our project is connected to whether it's essential oils mm -hmm. herbs food medicines, uh, laboratory, commercial kitchen, you know, the, all the education, the market garden, even a secret garden we're going to have. It's all connected to the microbes. So it's foundational. In okay. Tell me about the secret garden. What's happening in the secret yeah. garden? Secret <laughs> garden is 
<gasps> well, I read the book, The Secret Garden. Oh, me too. That's why I perked that. up. I thought, okay, are we are we actually having We're like the wall place. that's yeah. covered and there's a hidden door? And okay, I, I can tell you're being serious. Uh, I'm totally yes. serious. Tell me more. Okay, the well, little girl in me is very excited about because this. I've been a gardener my entire life. Yeah, yes. ever since I've been a little girl, okay. and and I've played. Yeah. I've played a lot in the garden. So I've, I've it's all about play. Mm -hmm. And when you, I mean, coming from the North, I was a wild foodist. I used to take people on retreats. How can we survive in the wilds? Yeah. Yeah. Here in Ecuador, it's a little bit different. It's not the same. Canada seasonally okay. has way more diversity in order to survive here. I'm sorry. We're off topic there, but here, um, we can grow all year. I have a lot of northern plants okay. that I have established for generations. And I see this space as being a place where someone can go and reconnect with themselves. Mm. Um, it's going to be about a quarter of an acre, but my vision is somebody walks a silent place, a silent zone, that somebody mm. walks in there and they don't want to leave. Wow. Um, whether, you know, all the elements will be in play. There'll be statues. There'll be plaques. Yeah. There'll be secret messages under bushes. You know, there'll be an area where people can put their name on it and write a little saying and hide it in a certain yeah. Like I see it being a place where people can connect in the, and it's right in the middle of our project or area. Right. And so this project area, Living Ground, in Masanamaka, um, we're in your personal property now, and then there's a site just a bit down the road that is going to be able to, it's already underway, the construction I know, um, to be hosting all these things that you're speaking mm -hmm. about. So for me, it feels like a very cool ecosystem that you'll have going on. There's the education. I know there's places for people to be staying, depending if it's more uh, I don't know, dormitory, like um, classroom, not classroom, what is it? Apprentice college, yeah. apprenticeship, yeah. thank you. Apprenticeship style, college, something like that. The modern college as college should be. Um, and maybe some people that are more here on a, on a tourism retreat, um, microbiome tourism and retreat activity yeah. that are happening. I know you're, you're offering all this as a, as a wholesome experience. Exactly. Yeah. And also raising some of the young people, you know, giving them the opportunity to be successful and change the world at the same time. This is the education of the future. And I, I feel fundamental to the future of humanity. As you were saying before, you weren't kidding and I'm not either. If we are not having more healthy, nutritious, balanced lives in everything from what we eat, how we exercise, how do we exist in community, our spiritual practices, mindfulness practices. We as a species are suffering from a lot of different illnesses right now, um, a lot of dis-ease. And I think your project- And four get cancer, huh? It is, and, and those didn't used to be the statistics. Yeah. That did not used to be like that. So somehow as humans, as, as smart and sophisticated and um, technologically advanced as we are, we have gotten ourselves into a position where we're extremely precarious, you know, with our health. And the fact that all this can be happening, I keep going back to the ecosystem because it feels very balanced. Um, the secret garden you're describing, that feels spiritual to me. You know, that's, that's my language. I'm a yogi, I'm a meditator, and that feels like I would have a spiritual connection with this nature and be reminded of what my body already knows is right. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we, we are a part of it, right? Uh-huh. I mean, we are nature and we've, we lord over it way too much. But I think mother, mother, mother nature, I mean, we have done so much destruction, mm -hmm. mainly because of deforestation and destroying these soils. Um, yeah. She needs us right now. Like she, yes, I always believed that mother nature didn't need us and she could just kick us out anytime she wants. Here's bumps. But we're like the flower in a garden, right? We're the consciousness. We're the, we're the one, we're the one that hold the information to be able to yes. reverse the damage we've done. So she does need us right now. Yes. Because we are her flowers. That's a beautiful and haunting metaphor. I feel the haunting of it. And it is this Whatever the language is people would like to use, like there's a wake up call that's needed or there's an awakening that is happening, but is it happening soon enough? Are, are we getting enough people? And I think education is so fundamental to everything. It is. You teach, especially young children, you start those habits early. Their neural pathways start to form around what's already intuitive to how to keep their body healthy. And you're offering them curriculum or, you know, a bit more, I'd say, um, maybe modern ways of educating if it's not specifically set, you know, old school modules and things, but how do we tap into a childlike curiosity and intuition that has intelligence to it? And you have a lot of information that would be valuable for generations. 
to be sharing for this. And that's the phrase, um, you know, eat like your grandmother would eat, yeah. you know, without the packaging, the packaged goods, um, things but, are grown locally. But unfortunately we can't Yeah, because, you know, uh, I remember eating a tomato from my grandmother's garden as a little girl. I right. never had that taste since. And I've been chasing it and we're almost there, you know, like we were almost bio, what we call bio complete or microbe complete okay. in our numbers. Yeah. Um, then we know that those plants have nutrition because that is the only reason the right. plant takes the nutrition. Wow. Very interesting. There's so many other layers of, um, we just have a little cat here. I wonder who's going to make the leap to, to she jump on my lap. I don't know about this. <laughs> Um, we will. Okay, she's part of the energy field here. It's like not all of nature's creatures who are all part of it. She's, I know she's going to. Okay, I better get ready for this because it's going to happen. Um, oh, the there are so many other things I know we could talk about for hours, literally, about this. Um, I want to do a few more things, you know, as, as we kind of wrap up here. And one is offer you an opportunity just to share or speak about anything that we didn't cover, um, either stuff that's important to you, your work, your heart. Or for people who are listening, who are interested in this retreat that we're hosting, um, to summarize, we will be, I think, hosting a couple different potentially workshops with you and experiences coming to your project site, perhaps where we are at this apothecary right now. If you do the blood work, this is where you're going to be coming is sitting in this stool that I'm in right now. Um, and then also your one-on-one -on -one appointments that you can have with people. So I think those are great things to talk about. Is there anything else you could think that you want to share, you know, right now? Yeah. And, and it's probably getting back to your question about mm. what is the mission? I mean, I think yeah. I would assume anybody watching this, I think most people know we have a lot of problems and sure. it's when we start to understand all these problems, there's a lot of frustration and anger that wells up because we realize yes. there's a lot of lies and we've been told things that are, we've been manipulated. Um, and it's a process to go through this. Um, and I think we're in a community where everybody helps each other with this, you know, because if we don't get that frustration and anger moving in a creative force, mm -hmm. then we're compliant to the systems that are breaking us. Um, that's probably another really, like, we have to act. Yes. You know, um, and it doesn't have to be grand things like what we're doing with the project. It can be small. Mm -hmm. It can be small steps. But if everybody took the steps, collaboration, numbers, community, that's how we're going to win. Raise raise the good mm -hmm. guys. You know, I mean, I, I'm saying this about the soil mm -hmm. and the human being. Raise yeah. the good guys. The bad guys don't want to be there anymore. Yeah. At our level, as, as above, so below, if we can raise all the good guys, yes. Mm -hmm. Just go away too, because they need us. Absolutely. It is so in line with what I just fundamentally believe. And you're speaking on the soil and microbe level, which is not my area of expertise. But for me, from a spiritual standpoint, you know, you raise your frequency, your vibration, you reduce your stress. We take self-responsibility for where we put our attention, our time. You will naturally create a vibration that's attracting good exactly. things and the bad things start to fall away. And we also need to mimic nature. See, this is what mm. Dr. Elaine has done, and this is what the soul work okay. is about. And yes. this is even what my health work is about. Mm -hmm. If we can observe and watch nature and how she heals, how right. does how does she heal damage? Yep. And mimic that, then we're in symbiosis of who we are. Instead of thinking that we're smarter than nature and we're gonna create our own solutions and there must be a lot of, you know, tech that's gonna do it. Don't worry, AI will well, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it can be good. There's 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 a light and dark side to everything, right? Including technology. Um I want to double down that point about nature and the biomimicry. There's so much wisdom in biomimicry. Yeah. That's like a whole nother podcast episode here. You made me think of something I wanted to actually ask you more about is Dr. Elaine. Mm -hmm. And I'm a bit familiar with her work from you. Um, and you, you've mentioned her a few times. Can you just describe what the essence is of that study? And I know you um, have done deep study work, you know, with her for those who might be interested in how they can find out more information of like where some of your, um, I guess, your your perspective comes from Come a lot from? of Dr. Elaine. Yeah. Yes, because the, uh, even the organic world, a lot of our soil testings are really not giving us the information to the questions that we're asking. It might tell uh -huh. us if there's magnesium or calcium, right? Uh, but it's being extracted. It's not okay. telling us whether they're soluble or insoluble. What Dr. Lane has done is using the microscope and understanding the way that the microbes work in a web, 
symbiotically Mm -hmm. um, and how we can bring this science to improve the soils and the soil sponge and the microbes. Right. Um, This is basically what she's teaching people. And we're, it's, it's a new science. It's a Mm -hmm. relatively new discovery. Um, And I think it's it. I think she is the grandmother of this. She'll be remembered two or three generations as being a hero. Well, with the students right now, we're, uh, I don't think there's that many students that have actually completed the course yet, but the right. numbers of students are increasing. That are starting to, yeah. Because especially young people are starting to go, wow, we've had it all wrong. We yeah. got it all wrong. We got to change our approach. Totally. And yeah. we do feel like we're up against the big corporation, the big egg. You know, like it's like, no, we, we, can't. because you are. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, and uh-huh. but even organically, we can't, we have to stop fertilizing, stop putting herbicides, stop putting yep. pesticides. So this is what Dr. Lane, that this mm-hmm. is her core message is yep. uh, we need to mimic nature and help these little good guys. Yeah. You no, know? absolutely. And can you share Dr. Elaine's, what, what is her full name um, or her? Dr. Elaine Ingham. Ingham. And it's okay. Soilfoodweb.com. Okay. That's amazing. Well, we might put that in some of these show notes that we have on the YouTube channel. Um, and also for you, if people want to learn more about your work, um, I'd love for you to share what are ways to find out more, get involved, be in touch with you. The website is, uh, I only have the project website because the project encompasses everything really, yes. but the umbrella livingground.art. Yeah. And um, if anybody wants to contact me, they can yeah. through, through the website. Okay. We'll put links to that. Mm-hmm. Um, I like asking this question. I feel like you've already shared this, but if there's a final message to the world, if you had an opportunity to put out a statement to the world of what you wish every person could understand a bit more deeply... What would what would that be? That they are their own most perfect teacher, doctor, helper, that we're fully responsible, um, and that we don't need to rely on these systems and these gods we put in place to keep us in health and yeah. happiness. Self sufficiency at all right. levels. Yeah. yeah. Beautifully said. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Leisha. Um, We will be wrapping up here and I'll mention to those who are watching again, if you liked this content, we have um, more coming out about the retreat for October. Um, We'll be announcing how to sign up and the exact dates very, very soon. We're filming this in mid April right now. So by the time you watch it, this information might be out there. We'll put it on the notes that are below this video. And then also don't forget about subscribing, hitting that like button and the bell, because that way you can see more of our content that comes out, especially this professional spotlight, health and wellness practitioners of Vilcabamba and surrounding areas. We are in (laughs) Masana Maka. I got to keep remembering that. Um, And one thing I'll tease is that we might show some other video here of some other interesting things, to say the least, that you've got going on in your lab. So maybe we'll capture a bit of that and weave it into this content too. All right. Thank you so much, Lisa. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys soon. Ciao.